All right. So now I want to talk to you about uh, three important points about validity here, continuing our discussion of deductive arguments. And then after that, we'll get on to inductive arguments. First of all, and perhaps most importantly, uh, we need to understand that valid does not mean the same thing as true. These are two separate concepts. And the problem here is that uh, outside the context of a logic class um, in the quote unquote real world, uh, people use the term valid all the time to mean true, right? In other words, somebody might say something and say, oh yeah, that's a valid point, essentially meaning they agree with it. However, Validity and truth are very different, right? And if you ever have doubts about that, um, all you need to do is remind yourself of the Janet Jackson example that we were just looking at, right? In that argument, every single claim is definitely false, yet I think fairly easily we saw that it was in fact a valid argument. Furthermore, only statements and not arguments are true or false, right? So I wouldn't ever want to hear a student talking about, well, that's a true argument. Arguments aren't true or false. Individual statements would be true or false. And in fact, one of the challenges I would say for this section 1.4 is keeping the terminology uh, straight. And I just want to let you know here to help you with that, um, Hurley, the author of the text, has provided for you here at the end of 1.4, just before the exercises that we'll get to here in just a second, uh, Hurley has provided for you a, a scheme that sh shows you exactly how these term terms are all related, right? So at the top, it says that statements are true or false. And then groups of statements can be arguments or non-arguments. Um, and then they, if they're an argument, it could be deductive or inductive. If it's deductive, it will be valid or invalid, sound or unsound, and, and so on, right? When we get to the inductive terminology there, you can understand that as well. So I, I think that chart there can be helpful. Uh, you may consider putting it on your note sheet. Uh, for the first exam. All right. Now, <clears throat> this is a very important point, and in fact, here I'll, I'll attempt to draw to uh, if I can draw a star next to it in a virtual way here uh, to indicate that this is a very important point. It's a point that we'll be coming back to again and again in this course, and in fact, throughout the entire quarter. Um, and is it, it is this idea that any time you have true premises, and now we're talking about actually true, like true in reality, premises, uh, and a false conclusion. In other words, you know the conclusion is false, and at the same time, you know the premises are actually true. Well, anytime you notice that pattern in a deductive argument, that always indicates that that is an invalid argument. It has to be invalid. And this is because, right, what does validity mean? Validity means that if the premises are true, the conclusion would be 100% guaranteed to be true. So if you have an argument with true premises and yet the conclusion is false, well, that argument is doing a horrible job of guaranteeing the conclusion is true because, of course, it is false. And so that's a sure sign <clears throat> right off the bat <clears throat> excuse me, that what you're looking at is an invalid argument. Now, I should also say here, just backing up a little bit, we also talked about sound and unsound, right? And so we know that any invalid argument is automatically unsound. And what makes a valid argument sound is the fact that the premises are actually true in reality. And so what this points to is the idea that a sound deductive argument, a sound argument, is really the pay dirt of symbolic logic or of logic. Because a sound deductive argument is one where you know you can bank on uh, the conclusion. The conclusion must be true uh, because, well, it's valid. And in fact, all the premises are true, and those premises guarantee the conclusion. So sound deductive arguments are the pay dirt of logic, whereas unsound deductive arguments um, have conclusions that may or may not be true, but we should, certainly shouldn't believe them based on whatever argument or evidence is being offered for that conclusion. All right. So give you another quick example here. Um, and I'll just preface this by saying, you know, I do tease the, the Mariners fans a little bit, okay? And, um, you know, it's just joking. Uh, don't get upset. Um, you know, have pity on me. Uh, I'm an A's fan, so things are even typically worse for me than they are for Mariners fans. So, nonetheless, uh, here's an argument. The Mariners have never been in the World Series, and the Mariners have won the highest number of games in a regular season for a team. Thus, the Mariners are based in Seattle. Now, we don't have to reflect on this too long to quickly realize that, of course, this is clearly an invalid argument. 
right? This conclusion, the Mariners are based in Seattle, does not follow from these premises in any way, shape, or form. So this is an invalid argument. At the same time, uh, we can recognize, and I, you know, this has been true for a long time, I'm counting on it staying true for quite a while into the future since I don't want to have to record these videos over and over again. But in fact, at least at the time of this recording here in uh, January of 2018, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it is true that the Mariners have never been in the World Series. <clears throat> excuse me. And it's true that the Mariners have won the highest number of games in a regular season for a team. And it's also true that the Mariners are based in Seattle. So every statement in here is true, yet it is clearly invalid. So this is just another way to sort of break apart this idea that valid and true are the same thing. Because again, they're clearly not. That was the point I was getting at there. OK, so um, with that, let's go ahead and look at page, uh, well, page 50 in this current edition of the textbook. Let's look at the exercises at the end of 1.4, exercise set one. And in exercise set one, um, we are given deductive arguments. Okay? And our task then is to determine if they're valid or invalid and sound or unsound. And so the, the problem number two here, because we'll always skip the starred problems, but problem number two says, since London is north of Paris and south of Edinburgh, it follows that Paris is south of Edinburgh. And so the first thing we have to do anytime we're evaluating uh, a deductive argument is we assume the premises are true. So let's assume that London is north of Paris and south of Edinburgh. If both of those claims or statements were true, would it then be guaranteed that, um, sorry, <laughs> that Paris is south of Edinburgh? And if you pause and think about that a little bit, uh, I'm hoping that you'll come to the conclusion that yes, that is guaranteed by those premises. And so you would say then, as we know, that this is a valid argument. Now, I do want to tell you that determining validity is the most difficult thing uh, that we struggle with here in section 1.4. And so I want to tell you that if it is at all possible to draw the information in the premises in some graphical representation. Um, that is typically a good idea. It will typically help you to understand um, if it's valid or invalid. So in other words, what I mean by that here is the first premise tells us that, um, let's see again, London is north of Paris, right? So we might draw that representation here that way. London is north of Paris. And of course, um, we're told that London is south of Edinburgh. So looking at this picture, right, does this picture we're asking ourselves, uh, does this picture guarantee that Paris is in fact south of Edinburgh? And it does, which is why we write that it's a valid argument. Okay, so hopefully that can help. Let's do a couple more of these here from this set of exercises to make sure we're getting the hang of it. And then um, we'll go ahead and move on to inductive arguments. So number three here, it's an important example from the text. Number three says, if George Washington was beheaded, then George Washington died. George Washington died, uh, therefore George Washington was beheaded. So again, we're going to, we already know that it's a deductive argument. We can tell, I think, there uh, that that is a hypothetical syllogism. And so what we do is we assume that the premises are true and ask if they then guarantee the conclusion. So let's assume it's true that if George Washington was beheaded, then he died. Let's assume that George Washington died. Would it then be guaranteed that George Washington was beheaded? So think about that. Um, sometimes we can kind of come to it and say, well, you know what? Actually, those premises don't really guarantee the conclusion. They, it's possible. The conclusion is possible based on the premises, but they're not, the conclusion is not guaranteed by them. And so I think you know, many people at least would say, oh, yeah. invalid, right, that that comes to that. Okay. Now, that might work for you, but if it doesn't, I have a couple other things to say here about this in terms of determining that it is, in fact, invalid. And by the way, um, if it's, yeah, okay, so if it's invalid, we'll come back to soundness here. I just realized I forgot to determine the soundness of these arguments. But we'll come back to that. Invalid. Um, we have to ask ourselves, is it really true that if George Washington was beheaded, then he died? In other words, is that true in reality? And the answer, of course, is yes. If you get beheaded, that's a sure way of ending your life.
Secondly, um, is George Washington dead in reality? Well, yes, of course. So we know both premises are actually true. Then we can ask, how about the conclusion? Was George Washington, in fact, beheaded? Was the first president of the United States, was the person our state was named after, was he, in fact, beheaded? No, he wasn't, right? So this is one of these examples where we actually have true premises and a false conclusion. And so we know that this must be invalid. Finally, in terms of understanding the validity here, we can ask, um, the first premise says, if George Washington was beheaded, then he died, right? What the first premise does not say is that the only way to kill George Washington was to behead him. I don't, I don't know what kind of cryptid that would be, maybe a werewolf or something, but at any rate, it's not true, right? It's not saying that it's the only way to kill George Washington was to, to behead him, right? So we're simply saying that one of the ways to kill George Washington was to behead him. And yes, we know George Washington is dead, but since that was only one of the ways to kill George Washington, knowing that George Washington is dead doesn't guarantee that it was beheading that ended his life. That's one more way to kind of process uh, why this is an invalid argument. Okay, so finally, uh, we'll do one more here, number five, which says, um, since the Spanish-American War occurred before the U.S. Civil War and the U.S. Civil War occurred after the Korean War, it follows that the Spanish-American War occurred before the Korean War. So again, is it valid or not? We have to assume, so in fact we have to set aside our knowledge of history, we have to assume that the Spanish-American War occurred before the Civil War. We also have to assume that the Civil War occurred after the Korean War. If we assume both of those things, would it be guaranteed that the Spanish-American War occurred before the Korean War? Many people uh, might be able to realize that it's invalid. However, this is a good example of one which uh, can benefit from drawing a picture, right? So we can draw a little timeline here. I'll try and stand off to the side. And it says, Spanish-American War, okay, uh, occurred before the Civil War. And Civil War occurred after the Korean War. So in other words, the Korean War occurred somewhere back here, right? But it doesn't say exactly where the Korean War occurred, just before the Civil War here. So does this picture guarantee then that the Spanish-American War occurred before the Korean War? It doesn't, right? They, for all we know, they might have happened at the same time. And so that is another way to see that number five here is invalid. Number three is invalid. And so before we get back up to number two, we can recognize then quickly that since both of these are invalid, They are automatically unsound, automatically. And then finally, with regard to this one about London, Paris, and Edinburgh, since it was valid, we need to ask if it's sound or unsound. So we need to ask if the premises are true. Is, in fact, London north of Paris? You can look it up, but it is, in fact, north of Paris. It's also to the, to the west of it as well, but it is north of Paris. And then the second premise says that London is south of Edinburgh. Well, Edinburgh is in Scotland, London is in England, England is below Scotland. It's also true. So not only is the first one valid, but it is also sound. And that's how we make that determination.